like many things that I think about, I kind of um, am walking this line, or I find myself walking a line. I mean, I, I find myself really resisting going to either extreme in regards to like cert taking certain conclusions. So therapy uh, would be another one to add to that list. You know, like everything, I'm only really speaking from my own experiences and what makes sense to me from what what I figured out, you know, uh, where I'm standing. But what I guess I would just refer to as the glass ceiling in therapy. And I knew this would happen eventually. Um, you know, I mean, I've read a lot of feminist writings that, you know, explain what therapy is really is um, just a way of sort of generally keeping women from uh, revolution. <laughs> it's really keeping women from going to the end of their thoughts um, in regards to the broader, in a broader political sense. Um, and I have personally reached that point in my own therapy, therapeutic journey. Um, however, all of that being understood, I'm not against therapy. I think therapy still has a lot to offer individual women who are trying to work through their own neuroses, to be quite honest with you, to put it in that, which is how I, I really understand it, is that we're dealing with highly individualized neuroses. You know, we might understand within the broader context that patriarchy and the narcissistic um, social structures that we exist in and have for many generations inevitably um, is designed to create neuroses in individuals and particularly in women. But that doesn't help any particular individual woman actually work through her very highly individualized neuroses that she developed um, in whatever isolated bubble, in whatever family context, in whatever neighborhood or culture or subculture that she came from, so that she grew up in. So, so having a broader understanding of how patriarchy has done this to women doesn't actually help you personally navigate those very specific, um, you know, hurdles and hangups and it doesn't help you get the very, again, highly individualized bindings off of you um, and out of your mind and off your voice and all of that. So that's where I think that I, I still would say that therapy can be immensely helpful in helping us on individual levels work through these work through these these neuroses which are also can be called just like they're just chips on our shoulder you know that's a, a good way of thinking about it too I think if we have all these little chips on our shoulders and if we come together as women trying to to you know communicate with each other trying to share ideas trying to build a community even if we all have this broader understanding of what patriarchy is doing our individualized neuroses and chips on our shoulders are going to make it really difficult for us to just have uh, real conversations with each other because, again, all of these neuroses interfere with our ability to take in certain types of information or express certain um, things about ourselves. And it's, it, it just becomes like a fucking nightmare that ultimately doesn't take us down a constructive path as far as a you know being a group um, of of people trying to work together to meet to meet a goal right to have a common goal so that's where I do think therapy can help and and I, t I say that with a huge grain of salt because first of all there are mo I think most therapists out there, at best, are not really capable of really helping women work through um, those personal neuroses, because ultimately, they they women do have to be able to take that and connect it up with the broader picture. And most therapists are not equipped to do that, even with the best intentions. So, 
um, let alone all the therapists, the therapists and counselors out there who are actual narcissists and sociopaths who are obviously very intentionally trying to sabotage their clients um, <clears throat> and inflict more damage upon their the client's psyche, you know, um, particularly women, um, or to even take advantage of their clients, uh, making them more vulnerable and, you know, whatnot. So obviously there's a lot I would warn any woman who's considering therapy um, to be very, very careful about um, the therapists that you try. I mean, certainly I generally would say narrow it down to women, but then even within that field, there's a lot of women who, again, can be can be narcissistic or sociopathic who could be, you know, actively trying to harm you. But even the even female therapists with the best intentions, um, who who don't who lack any any fundamental feminist understanding will will naturally lead you on paths that cause you to uh, just be stuck they're not right because because without a you know a fundamental feminist understanding then therapists will will over pathologize you um and it will prevent you from actually making the connections you need to make to to um recover from various neuroses, resolve various neuroses, and end up um, tying that into the bigger the bigger picture of understanding patriarchy, right? And understanding your oppression, particularly as a, as a woman. So again, huge grain of salt there, but I do think with the right therapist who um, has, who is strong in their intuition and in their intellect as, as a combination, and who is empathic and compassionate and who does have um, you know s- even somewhat of a feminist understanding um, I say critical feminist understanding doesn't have to be radical feminist but just critical in that they're willing to actually see that yes men are you know the cause of a lot of this and the types of neuroses that women deal with um, are very different than the types of neuroses that men develop and and so as long as the therapist is willing to understand and navigate that with you then that is what I mean by there's at least a very um, base baseline sort of crucial understanding of, of of feminism there they again they don't have to be like a radical feminist they don't have to you know this or that um but i think i i think that that can be tremendously helpful in helping us individually navigate um through our own you know neuroses so that we can get to a point where eventually we are actually sort of hitting this glass ceiling within therapy because therapy, as much as it might want to help, even with the best best circumstances, might want to help you. Um, you know, uh, recover and resolve. You know, all of these these um, messages that you've internalized that have been stopping you. Um, therapy is never going to allow you to reach a point of of moving in the in the direction of actual revolution it's just not ever going to do that I mean that's that's the limit right that's what I mean by that's the therapeutic limit that's the glass ceiling that you're hitting there um your therapist will never like validate or support or understand or whatever you getting to a point where you recognize certain types of drastic um, measures need to be taken in order for women to be liberated as a class. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, therapy is not there. And, and, and when I say is that not only will they not help you with that, it, they, therapy will actively discourage it. It will actively discourage that type of thinking. It will actively discourage 
um, any kind of actions or planning or associating with other women who are thinking in that same way, therapy will, will actively um, discourage you from it. Um, and it might not even necessarily be in overt ways. So, so yes, that's, that's where, you know, when you read, you know, feminist writings that talk about how therapy keeps women from, it keeps us spinning inside ourselves rather than spinning outside of ourselves, right? It keeps us focused inward on like fixing ourselves instead of the, you know, coming to that natural realization, the true realization that actually the problem is not inside. The problem is not inside of us individually. The problem is external. However, the external problems have caused a lot of damage and dysfunction. And again, like you'd say, neuroses or chips on our shoulder, however you want to frame it, it has inflicted a lot of damage internally that does prevent us from being able to think or see or act um, or move, you know. So that's where I say therapy actually can be very helpful with the right type of therapist um, to to uh, resolve a lot of those damages and miswirings and and um, internalization of messages that basically cause us to to stop or freeze or become self-destructive or whatever right um, so it's important that's that's an important part of the journey because we are unfortunately, we're so diasporatic, we're so individually separated out, all of us women, that our personal li- first-hand lived experiences can vary tremendously. And the messages that we internalize or conclude based on those experiences can vary tremendously. So again, there's a big portion of this journey that we are having to navigate on our own as individuals. And therapy... I think has with again the right type of therapist has the potential to help us along that very lonely part of the path before we're able to join up with other women um, and continue our continue following our thoughts to their logical end right yeah so that's where I stand um I'm not anti-therapy but I do understand it is the establishment it is the patriarchal establishment but impressively even within the con- the the confines of the patriarchal establishment very special therapists and can actually help women we can start to manifest the woman's world right there you know right there woman to woman in in that office or on that couch or whatever you know there is a potential for that to kind of happen so back to what I was saying about if you have a bunch of women who aren't coming to patriarchal understanding but are in therapy what you'll basically end up with is again a bunch of women who are still very separated still very isolated spinning in place over analyzing themselves into oblivion um, and they never make that connection of understanding their shared oppression and and what what there can be fucking done about it, right? On the other side of that, on the flip side of that, the opposite situation would be um, you have a bunch of women who do understand the shared oppression, but who come from such different individualized types of experiences and the trauma has manifested itself differently the messaging has manifested itself differently the neuro- the neuroses have manifested themselves differently and you end up with a collection of women who who maybe do have a shared understanding but because their individualized experiences are so different and the way their neuroses are manifested is so different all of the baggage that they're bringing to the table looks so different that it makes it difficult to even just have um, certain types of understandings, you're going to have lots of mis- miscommunications, you're going to have lots of contention, lots of um, triggering, you know, and all that stuff that, that, again, that's not a constructive situation either. So it's important that we do both. It's important that we individually take whatever measures it is that we can to work through our neuroses and to, to resolve them. Um, because that really is, that's really what it is. It's, it's a resolution. It's not a healing. 
I feel like resolution is the best word to refer to how to work through these things, right? Because it's sort of like there's been a miswiring. Like there's a certain message that we've internalized or obviously multiple messages that we've internalized that cause us to make intentionally logical misconnections, thought misconnections. You know, our thoughts, messages that prevent our thoughts from being able to follow that straight line to the source. You know, messages that keep deflecting and confusing our own thought processes internally. And so that's how neuroses develop, right? Instead of feeling anxiety, fear, or anger and connecting it directly to the source, we have all these messages that tell us, no, 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 the anxiety is coming from here or it's because of this or it's because of that. You know, like OCD would be like the perfect but the most obvious example, I think, like when someone is like, oh, I need to lock the door 15 times before I leave home. It's like they whatever anxiety they have, wherever the source of that anxiety is, has been has been deflected in their own head. And they're and they're deflecting that anxiety onto something else. Right. Getting a sense of control by locking the door 15 times in a row, you know, instead of actually allowing themselves to feel where that anxiety is actually coming from what other traumatic experience that was coming from so that's just one of the more obvious examples of what neuroses does in regards to blocking us from being able to trace you know our very legitimate feelings of rage and anxiety and sadness um, and disappointment and all those other complex negative emotions back to the source back to what we actually experienced because that's where you, something needs to be rerouted right and a different message needs to be concluded um and so i think again the right kind of therapy can help each of us individually do this and because all of these messages like i said are very different from woman to woman um though there's a lot in common there we can help each other with obviously by talking about it but but for the most part, it's going to be a lonely path, that part of the journey. I'd also like to tie grit into this because ultimately, even if we are all coming to the table with our, our broader understanding of patriarchy, um, we will inevitably run into, you know, not being able to see eye to eye. We'll run into, you know, miscommunications, misunderstandings hurt feelings resentment anger all this stuff it will it will eventually happen I mean it's it's not possible to not work through all of it but this is where I think grit comes into play and I think having grit means being able to endure discomfort because you're able to keep your eye on the goal right? What's on the other side of that pain and discomfort is something that is valuable enough to you that you're willing to endure the pain and discomfort. And um, that's not to make enduring pain and discomfort itself full of merit. No, that's a mistake. Um, but just having an understanding that it's the obstacle. This is the obstacle you have to move through sometimes in order to get to that goal right our mutual goal here that we have as a group um and that's where grit that's what grit allows us to do and i think a part of what what even unlocks our ability to tap into a level of grit that we never even realized we were capable of is being able to to really see that goal right if it's just some weird nebulous sort of vague idea then we're less likely to really stick through it and try and be and be motivated enough to, you know, to keep moving towards it. But if we have a clearer understanding of what is that goal, what does it actually entail, then women will, we, I think, surprise ourselves with our our level of grit that we're able to to um, develop or or access within ourselves. Um, it comes down to basic understandings of, of motivation. Creatures have the ability to endure a lot of very difficult, painful things, strenuous things, 
Um, but if they're if they're motivated by something very strong on the other side of that, then they will they will keep moving through it. You know, I mean, not indefinitely, but they will be. You know, you'd be surprised how much we can get through in order to get to what we're trying to get to. But it has to be a strong motivator on the other side of that, right? Which means we have to have a clear understanding of what it actually is. If it's just some vague thing of like, oh, one day we'll just be liberated, but it, we don't know exactly what that means or what that looks like or what that even, if we don't know what that might feel like, if we can't even get a taste of it, then why should we keep moving towards it? <laughs> I mean, think about it. It's completely illogical, you know, to keep it definitely enduring pain and discomfort moving towards some you know vague idea of a goal that we don't even know is even possible or we've never ex- we never experienced it as being possible or real which then connects me back up to what i was talking about in my video het versus lesbian feminism where i was talking about my own personal experiences of not of not being able to experience what female community could feel like, you know, if you haven't experienced that, then you're going to have a hard time believing or conceptualizing, let alone actualizing that goal. So for most of us, a lot of us who are very isolated, who for whatever reasons, you know, whatever circumstances haven't had opportunities to really experience that wildness, even to, you know, even fleetingly, you know, with other women, to experience what women actually can be for each other. Those of us who haven't had a chance to experience that are going to have a harder time being motivated enough to move through discomfort and, and pain with our fellow women um because we don't we haven't really believed it like 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 and and why should we right like why should a woman why should any creature believe that that there's something out over there just because people say so or because people imagine it it's it doesn't really make sense you know living creatures are wired to believe what they actually have experienced not believe just hearsay in order to believe just hearsay then you're expecting women to in a sense disconnect for themselves right if if um there's a certain level of trust or faith or maybe even i don't know i think almost even like a disconnection from self that that in some ways happens or has to happen in order for someone to have that leap of faith <laughs> Like if your if your life experiences have taught you to be very cynical, then that's that's why you are that way. Like and expecting someone to be a different way, if you haven't given them a reason to believe something, then like why should they just trust you? Just go off what your word is, you know? Like Why would you expect other women to just blindly follow you, to just blindly believe you if you can't, you know what I mean? Like, that's not having respect for other women's integrity of mind if you expect other women to just do this because whatever, to just believe that such and such is true when you know their own experiences have taught them otherwise you know you're 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 sort of in a way expecting them to gaslight themselves by discounting their own experiences which uh, have taught them contrary to what you're asking them to believe additionally you're asking them to blindly follow you which again shows that like a lack of respect for other women's integrity of mind so anyway that's sort of just my uh, my random, what do you call it? Free associating, talking about like therapy and getting onto all of this and what it means as a female community. 
um, trying to help each other find that common goal, you know, that a lot of this path is going to have to be on our own. But then when we connect up with each other, you know, how do we understand in a broader sense um, helping other women see that that goal and understand and, and not just see it, not just intellectually see it, but to feel it, to feel it in their blood, to feel it in their bones that it's real, that it's possible. You know, that's what's hard. Um, and that's what I was saying in that that other video where I was talking about, you know, just having an intellectual understanding is not enough. It is not enough. If that's enough for you, then, you know, you've got some other stuff going on where, like, maybe you've experienced something that has given you enough reason to believe it, but not other women have experienced that, you know? A lot of women haven't experienced that, so they don't have, they don't feel that reason in their bones that it's real, that it's true. Either that or you yourself are, are really good at gaslighting yourself and are falling into that trap of blindly following someone else and having that blind faith in someone. And, and I mean, that's not a criticism. That's just me recognizing that we're all capable of doing that. It happens all the fucking time, you know, so just be careful. Think about it. Like, really think about it. Are you just blindly following someone because what they say sounds logical? You know, I mean, do your life experiences fall in line with that? Do you have feelings or doubts, you know, about it? Does maybe something about it doesn't quite make sense to you or add up? I mean, think think about it. Feel about it, right? It's not just about thinking. It's about feeling, knowing, right? Knowing through your experiences what reality is. Um, yeah, so anyway, that's my blurb about it. Thanks for listening.